Why do you think that is? Well, both the Atlantean, he calls himself the Atlantean priest king, calls himself the son of Atlantis. See, these Anunnaki people, they were the ones who built the Atlantean civilization. He started having problems with his brother, Marduk. Marduk is in the Torah. He's in the Bible. He's in ancient Sumerian cuneiform tablets. He's also known to the Egyptians as Amun-Ra. Okay. And they started having a battle because Amun-Ra, a.k.a. Marduk, wanted to take over kingship early ahead of his processional period. And it was a big battle going on. He started a two wars. He started a pyramid war to keep to take over early. And he started a pyramid war to keep his reign even going longer. But the but their father, E.I. Enki, said, listen, though, go to the other side. Go go over there to Mesoamerica. Let me deal with him. Go start a civilization over there. So he left and he, he took Olmecs with him from Africa and he started the Teotihuacan civilization. He built that long before the Mayans. The Mayans inherited what was already there. And you can learn that from homegrown archaeologists in Mexico. They will tell you that the Mayans built absolutely nothing. The Aztecs came hundreds of years later when a volcano erupted in their valley, destroyed their community. They stumbled across Teotihuacan as well. And they also inherited the, tech, you know, the, the pyramids going all the way down into the Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, and so this was built by a previous culture, and the Mayans are the ones who named them Teotihuacans. Now, what does Teotihuacan mean? The city of Tehuti. Who is Tehuti? Thoth is known as Tehuti in other parts of Africa. It's the same architect, the same man. Interesting when you're sitting here going through all this stuff. So Assyrians, for you, you, you he was the god of Babylon, right? Marduk. Marduk, yeah. So what, what, do you, what do you know about Assyrians? You said you studied Assyrians. Assyrian and, and, and Babylonians? Yeah, what do you know about Assyrians and Babylonians? Well, the Assyrians are the people that learned a lot from these people like Marduk and uh, Sargon uh, and Etana, uh, Enki and Lil. Uh, Ningajita and all these other Nergal and all these other ancient Sumerian gods. They call them the Sumerian, the pantheon. They said the gods that came from heaven to earth, they were a pantheon, the original pantheon, long before the Greek pantheon. And that they taught them uh, how to make weapons, how to make beer. The instructions for the first keg of beer are in the Sumerian tablets. They taught them how to build st better structures, how to irrigate fields for growing crops in arid deserts. They actually, in the tablets, talk about clearing out the Euphrates and the Tigris to make it better for irrigation. All these technologies, they even have a Sumerian tablet giving to the Assyrians, showing them how to take the plow and how to utilize the plow. All this is handed down knowledge from other people. A few saying from Babylonians. Babylonians and Assyrians got knowledge from these people. The Dogon tribe called them the Nomo. And it's interesting that the Dogon have the same similar representation of these people, but they're all the way in Africa. And they say that they came from Sirius B. Now that we know that now we know that there's a trinary star system called Sirius A, B and C. Sirius B is a failed star. It ran out of fuel. It turned into a white dwarf, just like our sun will in five billion years. Right. It's, we have a middle aged sun. Now, we can't see Sirius B with the naked eye, but they knew it was there. Not only did they know it was there, but they also knew the orbital period. They knew the trinary orbit, orbiting, how those stars orbited each other. And for thousands of years, they handed down this knowledge. They even knew from the NOMO the sizes, the shapes, and even the colors of the planets inside of our own solar system long before any astronomers ever figured it out. And that's why the Dogon tribe is a huge anomaly. They used to rule over the land of Kemet before it was called Egypt. And they were overthrown and they ended up moving out to Mali, Africa, where they still hold the same traditions till this very day. No police, no military, no prisons, just knowledge.